What's uh, what's the latest on Ukraine? Well, uh, they're trying to make the best of what I think is a bad situation. They're hoping that there are going to be certain members of Trump's administration um, who will be supportive of Ukraine. But more and more, <clears throat> I am hearing from Ukraine and also just here in Europe that uh, – the break, the transatlantic break, um, may be irrevocable. Um, we will see, obviously. <clears throat> but the Europeans are starting more and more to say if uh, if the United States is going to go down the path of America first, then Europe must do the same. And it must think about Europe first. And that is the rift that Vladimir Putin has so been desirous of. Yeah, exactly. When it comes to... Yeah, is, is a disruption of the transatlantic alliance, and it's a break in NATO. That's what he wants to see. And as Europeans are increasingly looking at an unreliable military and defense, the strategic partner um, with Washington, they are starting to think more and more about themselves and how they can defend um, their um, sovereign territory, whether that's uh, some sort of no, new European Union security defense force, or increasing Brussels' capacity to uh, unify the, the disparate members to present a unified uh, defense uh, either in Ukraine or if Ukraine is to be lost, then whatever the new border will be with Russia. Um, but this is a disturbing wake-up call on this side of the Atlantic. Um, and I am also disturbingly and I don't know if this is going to gain in traction, but I am hearing uh, from many reputable circles in Ukraine that there are increasing calls to resume Ukraine's nuclear weapons program. Uh, they have uh, they have nuclear plants. They have the technology. Of course, as a member state of uh, the Soviet Union, they know how to make nuclear weapons, and we have broken or we will break if we abandon Ukraine, as I strongly suspect we will, we will have broken the 1994 um, uh, Budapest Accords. And well, so up, there is uh, no... But, uh, Putin already broke that. I mean, Russia was yes. a signatory to that. No. Yeah, no, I mean, this is... It, 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 yeah, it, it has long been broken, and we have not held up our part of the bargain. Our part of the bargain was we would defend Ukraine's sovereign borders, 1991 borders, post-Soviet Union, if they gave up their nukes. And they right. agreed. They gave up their nukes. Right, which includes Ukraine, which includes Crimea, by the way. So I, a couple of questions here, Phil. Uh, Europe is, you know, has more than its own share of problems right now. I mean, you've got... Uh, first of all, uh, in the European Union, you've got Hungary, who is kind of, you know, Orban is openly kissing Putin's ass. Um, in NATO, you've got Turkey, and, and Erdogan is, is sidling up to Putin. Um, I, I, you've got multiple European countries that are, uh, they, they're not to the Brexit point yet, but there's a lot of talk about that kind of thing among the parties on the right, particularly in Germany, France, and Sweden. And, uh, you know, their objection is the open borders within the European Union. They want, they, you know, they want to reverse mm -hmm. that because uh, they're getting a lot of brown-skinned Muslim immigrants into these countries. Yep. And they're not happy about it. Um, eh, how does Europe pull this off if they're going to try to turn into the United States of America? Well, I don't think they're going to necessarily try and turn into the United States of America. A, 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 maybe, maybe a confederacy, a European confederacy, right. where the us. individual didn't work for us, and I don't know as it would work for the EU. But a lot of uh, a lot of what has been foundational in Europe is now um, up in the air. Uh, changes will be happening. We will have to see what the Trump administration does and how Europe will respond. You are absolutely right. Europe has a lot of internal problems, not least of which these migration issues that you're discussing, not 
just that uh, the the quote unquote open borders, but there's also there's legislation that certain member states are required to take in refugees as they arrive in Europe, and there's been a, a pu strong pushback on that by member states. Yeah. Um, and well, then yes, the rise of the right. If I if I recall. Yeah, and Hungary is not even cooperating. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the rise of the right. Uh, in Europe is uh, obviously uh, found uh, fertile ground, but it is also repeatedly we are seeing, and we I did an episode about this on the edge with a, a, a European expert, uh, Jessica Bin, and we discussed the fact that um, we know that Moscow is behind a lot of this because it is there. They know Russia cannot beat the West militarily. It's not possible, neither financially, in terms of people, in terms of weaponry and uh, uh, strength in our military. What they can do is they can push money into the hands of those who uh, will fracture our society, drive uh, wedges between allies and friends, and this is exactly what we are seeing happening. Um, Mas Putin is, while well, Putin has a a whole hill of issues that he needs to deal with. Um, I am sure that he is looking at this with the way things are progressing right now, post-election in the United States, and also looking at the rise of the right and the and the 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 elements within Europe that are like-minded uh, with both Putin and Trump. Um, he is he is hoping that he can outlast us, and the way things are going right now, he may very well. And Ukraine is terrified about this, and Ukrainians are terrified about this, but the tragic truth of it is that they have no choice. They will continue to resist Russian invasion because it is an existential threat for them, just as uh, losing their primary colony in Ukraine is an existential threat for Moscow. So um, with the election of, of Donald Trump, who is clearly, and I'm sorry, Tom, I'm I have to be categorical about this. He is compromised by Vladimir Putin. I am in this business for 30 years, covering defense matters, strategic matters, intelligence matters. I have yet to meet with a contact of mine within those entities that will dispute whether or not Trump is compromised oh, so by obvious. Putin. The only question is how much, right? And 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 under what circumstances? Um, I you know, and in the, what circumstances? The, 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 what you know, conditions? If, if, What's he got? Yeah, if if Putin has blackmail on Trump. Um, you know, if it's something that's merely embarrassing, like the, the notorious PP tapes, uh, you know, it's possible that tr Trump will point, push back on that because he doesn't care anymore. He's not going to run for re-election. Um, his wife is already pissed at him and not going to move to D.C. with him. Uh, you know, their marriage is broken. Um, he just doesn't, he do doesn't care. I mean, he was humiliated by St Stormy Daniels uh, talking about his little mushroom penis. Um, he, I, he's had all these things. Uh, I, you know, I, can't, I just can't imagine what Putin would drop that would humiliate him. If Putin has, uh, unless it's him, you know, with a 14-year-old girl or something, but even that I think he would survive now at this point. And and if it's well, financial, sadly, if, it's, maybe. if it's Putin dangling, here's a yeah. billion dollars to build a, a, a hotel in Moscow. I don't think uh, Trump needs that anymore either. He's got a five billion dollar project going in Doha right now. He's got, uh, you know, his son-in-law got two billion dollars from the Saudis. So I'm thinking when Putin, you know, the day after Trump was elected, Putin released all these nudie pictures of Melania. And then the day after that, the chief of intelligence for Russia came out and said, Trump was elected with help from certain sectors, from certain regions, and he now owes a, a, a positive response to those people. These are my, I'm paraphrasing badly, but the, that's a, the essence of what he said, which in other words, we helped you get elected, you owe us. And I'm wondering if, the, you know, Biden spent two hours with Trump yesterday, and they say, they say that, uh, or, yeah, yesterday, and they say that a lot of it was devoted to discussing Ukraine. I'm wondering if Biden said, hey, Pu hey Trump, uh, Putin's making you his sucker here. He's playing you. And look at this. He's, he's slapping you around, you know, he's, uh, with uh, the pictures of Melania. I, don't you think it's time to stand up to this guy? You know, I, this is my hopeful scenario, Phil. What, what do you well, think I'd about love, I'd love to be hope, I'd love to be hopeful, Tom, but I am currently en route back to Kiev. Yeah. And I am wondering how I am going to look these people in the eye. Yeah, um, as an American. Our, hist our history with Ukraine in the West, we have repeatedly 
betrayed and abandoned Ukraine. This is the third Ukrainian war of independence, and the prior two were primarily lost because the international community did not have the will to support a sovereign, independent Ukraine. Yeah. And to have it happen a third time, um, I don't, I don't see Ukraine recovering from it. And I, I think the Ukrainians. Um, we're willing to give President Biden uh, some leeway, knowing that, uh, you know, maybe he didn't want to push the issue because uh, of the fear of a, a Trump, well, a Trump administration, a second Trump administration. Well, that second Trump administration is here regardless of the fact that um, Jake Sullivan and, and, and President Biden have played very cautious right. with the Ukrainian war effort. Um it's they're going to have to look at different metrics. Yeah, no, I get um, it. if Phil, they cannot I, rely on America. I, I only have about 50 seconds here before we hit sure. a hard break. Um, what is the current state of the war? I, I understand that Putin is massing like 50,000 troops and he's got these yep. North Koreans. Yep. And I mean, is is this yep. going to be he, a real dark he has time? launched? It's going to be it's going to get very dark. In Ukraine, um, uh, this election, uh, Americans have voted for a situation where I am very sad to say, but I am um, I'm confident in saying it that a lot more Ukrainians are going to die as a result of this vote. Um, 50,000 troops in the Kursk region, which is that section where Ukrainians uh, made an incursion into the Russian Federation to bring the war to Russian territory. Um, the initial probes and attacks apparently have been repulsed. Um, the, the North Korean uh, soldiers are not proving themselves to be uh, reliable allies, more, more like uh, uh, cannon fodder. Um, but make no doubt about it, unless something unexpected comes out of the Trump administration with this war, uh, we are going to look at Ukraine losing more and more territory, um, unable to defend itself. More uh, Ukrainians will die, but the Ukrainian will to to survive and fight will never diminish because it is existential. The Russians are trying to destroy them as a people, a nation, and an identity, and they won't accept that anymore. So we need to prepare ourselves this for a lot the more Tom death Hartman in Ukraine. Program. Yeah, I get it. Phil Inner. Uh, Phil, thank you. Check out his uh, On the Edge podcast. Phil, thanks so much. I look forward to talking to you next week when you're back in the queue. All right. See you then. Thank you.